I have said our vital signs are crucial in identifying sepsis. What we see in the patient is crucial in identifying sepsis. So with an infection, with an infection, it's important. With an infection, and you have a respiratory rate of more than 22 breaths per minute, a respiratory rate of more than 22 breaths per minute, mental decline, meaning that you, the patient starts presenting with disorientation, confusion, lethargy, agitation, these are all signs of mental decline. And a systolic blood pressure of less than 100 millimeters of mercury, these three parameters, respiratory rate of more than 22 breaths per minute, mental decline, and a systolic blood pressure of less than 100 millimeters of mercury are all clinical parameters that can tell us that the patient is having sepsis with an infection. So in the context of an infection, with these three parameters, the patient is having sepsis. Treat this patient for sepsis. Don't wait to have a uh, white blood cell, to have uh, uh, platelets and all the like that will indicate that the organs are failing. No. We have clinical parameters that will tell us that the, our organs are failing or that the patient's organs are dysfunctional. So you have a respiratory rate of more than 22 breaths per minute. You have mental decline and you have a systolic blood pressure of less than 100 millimeters of mercury. These three parameters, already if we are talking of the scores that are used in determining the risk of a patient dying when that patient is having an infection, it means that this patient is already having a score of 2 and above. And when we say the patient is having a score of 2 and above, it means that the chances of mortality, the chances that the patient is going to die are increased. The risk of that patient dying is increased. And we have to treat this patient of sepsis. So you have respiratory rate, mental decline, and a systolic blood pressure of less than 100 millimeters of mercury. These are clinical parameters to define that this patient is having sepsis and we need to implement our interventions as soon as possible. Don't wait. Remember in our, in our explanation of pathophysiologic process, we said injury to the tissues is unprecedented. It is rapid. So if you can't wait for 30 minutes, you want, can't wait for one hour, you can't wait for two hours or for three hours to transport the patient or for laboratory results to come out or to escalate care, meaning that to increase the level of interventions or to shift care to an area where it is designed to manage these patients. So you need to identify very fast that this patient is having sepsis. Now, how do we identify that the patient is no more having sepsis but septic shock? Remember, we define septic shock as what? A subset of sepsis in which there is what? There is circulatory, cellular abnormalities or dysfunctions that are increasing the risk of the patient dying. So you have septic shock as a subset of sepsis in which systemic dysfunction where you can talk of cardiovascular dysfunction where you have the blood vessels that have collapsed or you have cellular dysfunction where there is a reduced uptake of oxygen to produce energy and when you have this the risk of the patient dying are increased more than the patient dying from from sepsis so how do we identify that this patient is no more having the sepsis the patient is instead having septic shock how do we identify this we know that the lactates will be high but where are we going to identify where are we going to have the facilities in achara are we going to have lactates in Ako, are we going to have lactates 
in a flower, are we going to have lactate? In tokomberi, are we going to have lactate? No. But we have the blood pressure of the patient in front of us. Are we, if we have the blood pressure of the patient in front of us, we should be able to say that the patient is having septic shock. So how are we going to use the blood pressure to say the patient is having septic shock? We all know of the main arterial pressure. The main arterial pressure, which is calculated as what? The diastolic blood pressure plus one third of our pulse pressure. And we know that the normal, the normal should be between 65 to 90 millimeters of mercury. So when we take our patient's blood pressure, we calculate the main arterial pressure. And if this main arterial pressure cannot be raised above 65 millimeters of mercury with the freeze that you are administering, it means you need a medication to raise this blood pressure. And when you have sepsis and your blood pressure, the main arterial pressure is below 65 millimeters of mercury and you are freeze the normal saline and the renal lactate that you are administering cannot raise this blood pressure above 65 millimeters of mercury. You need a medication, you need a vessel pressure to raise this blood pressure. And because you need a medication, you need a vessel pressure to raise this blood pressure or this main arterial pressure above 65 millimeters of mercury, our patient is having septic shock. Treat this patient for septic shock. So this is critical that we understand that when a patient is having sepsis and the blood pressure drops, we can't raise this blood pressure with our fruit administration. And because we can only raise the blood pressure with a medication, this defines septic shock. Let's not wait for lactate. Because the time that will take to wait for lactate, or the time that will take to do laboratory investigations to see that there is cellular dysfunction, there is cardiovascular dysfunction, and the risk of the patient dying is increasing, is not there. So use your main arterial pressure to define what septic shock is. Use your main arterial pressure that is not going to be increased with administration of fruit. That is only going to change when we administer a medication that is going to compress the blood vessels, the vasopressors, to raise this blood pressure. This is what we define as septic shock. So dear viewers, summarily, we are saying that for us to see sepsis in the patient, for us to see that the patient is having septic shock, for us to know that the patient is having sepsis and septic shock, we have to use our clinical parameters. We have to use our vital signs. And we have said respiratory rate of more than 22 breaths per minute, mental decline characterized by agitation, lethargy, weakness, disorientation, confusion, and a systolic blood pressure of less than 100 millimeters of mercury is going to define sepsis. It means that the, our organs are becoming dysfunctional. Remember, we define sepsis as what? A serious condition where our organs are injured in an attempt by our system to fight an infection. So when these organs are becoming dysfunctional, we are going to see it with our respiratory rate of more than 22 breaths per minute, mental decline in our patients, and a systolic blood pressure of less than 100 millimeters of mercury. This is going to define sepsis with an infection. And with septic shock, we have said the mean arterial blood pressure cannot be raised on the weed fleet. It is going to be raised with what? With medications. And because our mean arterial pressure is going to be raised with medications, we define septic shock. So this is how we are going to see sepsis and septic shock in our patients. 
So we use this parameter, so we use this clinical uh, criteria to see sepsis and septic shock in our patients. So it is important, it is crucial that we don't wait for laboratory results. We identify, we see sepsis in our patients. Our patients are in front of us, we see sepsis through the use of our, these parameters, through the use of our subjective and our objective data. What we see in the patient, what the patient tells us, we are going to use it to define sepsis. I hope we can use our parameters to identify that our patients are having sepsis and septic shock. Remember, we are the eyes, we are the ears, we are the, the skin, we are the mouth of our patients. So let us use our senses to identify sepsis so that we can prevent unnecessary deaths from occurring. But sepsis is the common cause of deterioration in our patients. So dear viewers, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay blessed. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.